Yes, sir. I believe so. All right. Uh, everyone, hello. <laughs> Welcome back for another episode of the Tone Dome, TTD4, as we're calling it now. Uh, Sam and I are uh, <laughs> so glad and honored to have uh, Anish Kumar with us, who is currently on trial with the Pacific Northwest Ballet. Uh, Anish, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. We're good. 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 excited for this chat man <laughs> yeah i'm excited to be here it's 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 been a long time coming with sam and uh now i just met brandon recently but it's gonna be a fun time hell yeah awesome. dude awesome uh anish you obviously know sam very well uh i, I i'm just meeting you for the first time now uh, t- tell us a bit about yourself uh when you started playing trombone uh growing up stuff like that yeah no for sure so my name is anish kumar uh i'm from the great state of texas I was uh, originally from Dallas, and then I moved down to Houston when I was pretty young. So I've been in Houston for pretty much the majority of my life. Uh, And I started playing trombone, you know, like most middle schoolers in sixth grade. Um, I grew up listening to my brother play trombone. He also was a trombonist and went to school for performance. So that's kind of where I got the inspiration. Uh, You know, I remember hearing him practice excerpts and you know, play all the normal solos and whatnot that we hear in the trombone repertoire, uh, you know, almost daily uh, while he was in high school. Uh, And then after he went to college, you know, I have fond memories of him playing uh, and just hearing those things, they kind of, you know, echoed with me. So I started playing trombone pretty much a direct result of that. Uh, You directly influenced me. And, you know, from there, it's just kind of been a one track, you know, I've just been going through high school to college up until now. It's just been, you know, about trombone. And I, wow. I really love the instrument. Uh, and I think my brother had a pretty big influence on me and same with my teacher as well. Uh, his name was Brian Logan. Um, but yeah, you know, grew up in Texas. I did my undergraduate degree at Northwestern university. Uh, and then now I just finished my master's degree at new England conservatory in Boston. So it's been a, bit of a journey you know going all over the place learning different types and styles of music trombone playing and also just getting to experience like you know the different cities uh cultures that come with it and the types of people you know at each school and each city it's it's been a it's really been a blast dude absolutely yeah i I have a question Do, do you have any musical family members other than your brother i mean no no dude wow so it's just me and my brother my brother he's five years older than me uh and then it's me, but it's just us two. Everyone else is kind of doing uh, different things. We'll say that, you know. Got you, yeah. So you wanted to be better than him then. That's what the deal was. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was a little bit of competition in me. I, I was a little spunky kid, you know, so I may, maybe a little bit, but he's a really great player. You know, there are a lot of great videos of him. You can easily search his name on YouTube and find really great videos of him uh, collaborating with other trombonists and musicians. Um, he was really he's a really great player player uh and he does arts administration stuff now uh he's at juilliard um but yeah you know it's only us two <laughs> nice so nice. so you you said you went to northwestern nec what's the difference man like one i mean i, I went to nec so i got the conservatory mm-hmm. experience as like my undergrad which was very <laughs> weird uh, but Northwestern is like a big college, so I'm yeah. curious. I mean, I think each school has, you know, its advantages and disadvantages. And for people who are looking to, you know, choose between schools and find out kind of what environment's right for them, you know, they both offer very different things in some senses. Like, obviously, Northwestern was university. I got a very broad general education Uh, I took a lot of classes outside of just music. I actually was doing another major for quite some time. I was doing economics, but I eventually just switched just to music. But, you know, you're also surrounded by a lot of different people. Uh, You're not just only around musicians and, you know, artists. You're also around people who are doing uh, engineering, creative writers, uh, in science, uh, math, you know, all types of different subjects. And some of my closest friends, you know, during my time at Northwestern, you know, they weren't musicians. Um, so, you know, I, I had a bit of a different experience. I was definitely in terms of workload, uh, Northwestern really challenged me, uh, again, cause I was just doing a lot of different things. You know, I was 
handling trombone while also trying to handle like a huge classwork, you know, a class mm. load of uh, uh, different types of classes that were going towards a different degree. So uh, in that sense, you know, I think Northwestern and universities in general, they just have a more of a bit of a broader education. But, uh, you know, at NEC, at least my time there, you know, you can definitely tell that it's really concentrated, you know, um, maybe you can relate to that in, in some way. I'm sure you too, Brandon, you know, with conservatories, you're really focused on what is happening in your art form. And there's not many, uh, honestly, distractions outside of that. Like mostly all the classes you're taking, maybe with the exception of a few, um, really are guiding how you want to approach your instrument, how you want to approach music and how you want to like develop your career as a musician. Yeah. Um, so NEC is, you know, conservatory, uh, maybe just a little bit more concentrated, focused, definitely smaller. You're not really getting the same social experience that you would get at a university. Right. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I, I think they both have pros and cons to them, you know, what, what would you say that benefit is to like, uh, having a broad education when it comes to trombone and music? I mean, did you, mm -hmm. you feel like that you gained something from that? Is, well, I definitely got more clarity on like what I didn't want to do mm. and what I wanted to do because, you know, like I said, I was doing another degree for, you know, almost three years um, and it's a lot like, you know, I, I, I'm really envious of the people who could um, go through that process without having to just who are able to really just manage that type of stress and that type of workload. But, you know, for me, I really found out pretty quickly where I wanted to place my priorities. Um, and, you know, that was trombone for me, for sure. So I think, but I wouldn't have known that without getting this broad education and, like, taking different classes, uh, you know, within, like, math, economics, writing. I, I wouldn't have gotten, like, these types of uh, experiences. And, you know, at Northwestern... It, it, some of the best education, you know, in terms of some of these other subjects, they're like some of the greatest professors um, in the country right now. So, you know, I think having exposure to that uh, offered me a little bit more uh, like, you know, experience in trying to figure out and gauge what was right for me while also, you know, it wasn't just like the only type of education I got, like the education I got within music was, you know, a world-class education in my opinion. And I, I learned a lot from that, took away from that. But I think those experiences in the general education part and meeting different people who have different experiences, uh, you could take a lot away from that and apply it to your instrument and uh, also just yourself as a musician in person. Right. Yeah. It seems, it seems like you could, you learn a lot from people who are just good at what they do, you know? Yeah. Like, no, Definitely. It, like those professors that teach math at a at Northwestern of all schools, that seems like would be inspiring in some way, you know, like because yeah. maybe you're not you're not into it, but, you know. It's yeah. Like, and, you know, it's it's interesting to see what it's like when you have a great teacher, not mm -hmm. only in music, but just anything else. Like, you know, I, I had some really great teachers who uh, helped me in subjects where I honestly thought I wasn't going to do well. Uh, and you can take that, I mean, especially as musicians, you know, a lot of us do end up teaching on some level, we can kind of take those experiences of how they were, be, how they're able to be so like effective with students, uh, and how they're able to reach students in certain ways that we can also apply to as musicians and, you know, hopefully teachers in the future, which I have some aspiration, you know, to teach people. So it's, it's good to take kind of that experience and also observe that and, put it towards the bigger picture. Anish, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm getting comments that we can't hear you. Can you hold it a little closer? Can you hear me? Off? Yeah, I think that's How about better. now? We'll see. My my dad texted me from downstairs. He's like, we can't <laughs> hear Anish. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. George. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, well, uh, oh, go ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go, go ahead, ahead, Brandon. Go okay. ahead, Brandon. Uh, Anish, so having... Uh, experienced both uh, the conservatory setting and the university setting. Uh, for those who may be listening now, uh, you know, like a senior in high school or something who are trying to decide if 
uh, conservatory or a university is the road mm-hmm. to go. Uh, I guess looking back now, uh, do you see yourself having made the, the right choice or what would you recommend to them? Yeah, no, I, I definitely see myself making the right choice. Like for me, I think a university was what I wanted when I was graduating high school. And it's still something that I am totally on board with. Like now looking back on it, I guess now it's six years, you know, since I've started, uh, I've started college. Um, you know, it's, it's really personal. Uh, there's not really a right answer. I, I don't think, cause you know, my experience going to university and then going to a conservatory uh, can be really different, you know, for everybody else who might be trying to make that decision because conservatory, you know, at the same time, while it's may not be as broad, you're really getting also in the same way, like a world class education that's really concentrated on what you're trying to do. And, you know, for me personally, I can tell you that six years ago, I wasn't exactly 100% sure that trombone was my number one priority. That wasn't like, uh, while I was going to school for it, I wanted to explore other avenues. I wanted to have the opportunity to maybe do something different. And I wanted to see if that was right for me. And obviously, you know, through all the experience I had at school, I was able to kind of discern that and come to the conclusion that trombone is what I wanted to do. And music was something that was, you know, not just my passion, but something I wanted to make a career out of. But you know, there are some people who already know that from the get-go. You know, there are people who are like, they're dead set on becoming a musician when they're young, uh, you know, or they know that. They have that passion. They want to make it a career. And a conservatory could be like a great environment to nurture that, you know. Um, but obviously, like, it's not to say that it's not possible at a at a university. You know, there are a lot of universities, too, now that are really small. And, you know, the music schools are really... Uh, concentrated and you can get kind of a similar experience while still experiencing that broad uh, outlook. But I think the main thing that drew me to the university was the teachers uh, for me. And at that time when I was young, I really got along well with them. And, you know, I think conservatory or university, regardless, what you should be paying attention to really is are, are these people who are going to be teaching you for the next four years, two years, whatever it is, are they going to be the ones that are going to help you get to where you want to be? And I think for me, I, when I was a senior, I got good recommendations from people and, you know, I got to meet, learn from them before going there. And, uh, you know, looking back, I, I don't regret going to university, uh, you know, at all. It was a great experience for me. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, I think I finally resolved the audio issue. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, well, My bad. I, I can keep it closer for sure. No, no, no. I think I don't think even think it was your problem. I think the the program I'm using to live stream it was giving us issues. But yeah, I, you mentioned about teachers, Toby Mulcahy. What the heck, man? <laughs> like, get, yeah. Compare and contrast. I want to know. So at Northwestern, it's not like a typical trombone studio uh you actually have i had five teachers while i was there so it was michael mulcahy who plays second trombone uh with the chicago symphony uh tim higgins who plays principal trombone with san francisco symphony uh doug wright who plays principal with minneapolis or minnesota and then two bass trombones christopher davis he was a bass trombone professor there and uh he taught the trombone choir he also taught my quartet and then uh, Randall Hawes, who plays with uh, Detroit. So it's a really stacked, you know, it's a stacked lineup of players. Yeah, seriously, and, and, they got and money. Pedagogues. Yeah, it's a stacked, <laughs> stacked lineup of pedagogues, you know. So, um, you know, when I was talking about, like, this really broad education at Northwestern, I also got a very broad, like, education within the trombone. Because while, you know, they definitely were all – kind of preaching the same types of things in terms of concept and style. Each one of them had their own individual characteristics and uh, teaching methods that, you know, I could take away from and kind of pick and grab what I would like to use and apply it to this overall method. Um, and, you know, at Northwestern, I, I would say, you know, it's kind of hard to compare I mean, it's easy to compare a little bit, but also hard to compare because, you know, when I was going to school as an undergrad, uh, 
I was going to school for a very different thing, at least for me personally, than when I was when I was going to school for my master's. What I was looking for and to get out of the experience was very different between the two. Uh, but at Northwestern, you know, I I really learned just how to play the trombone. Like, what are the most ideal? Like, what is the most ideal way for me to approach the the instrument and how I want to conceptualize the instrument? So it's actually funny. Uh, uh, Mulcahy has this mantra. It's the most beautiful sound on every note, one note at a time, as easily as possible. So again, Mm -hmm. the most beautiful sound on every note, one note at a time, as easily as possible. Uh, It's really funny. Whenever I was a senior in high school, I had a lesson with him. It was my first lesson, and he repeated it to me like five times. (laughs) And then he was like, what did I just say? And I was like, note, easy. Um... (laughs) <laughs> really e- easy as possible and he was just like but um it's like a memory you know, test yeah. man that's it's like a memory test that's hard. <laughs> before I even before i even got to school <laughs> but um yeah that was his mantra you know and and there's really something to it is to you know just every note that you play just have the most just playing with a lot of ease having just this beautiful thought and sound in your head and really just amplifying that through the horn through your lips uh, and just making that something simple to do as just picking up the horn and making the sound come out. Um, but also, like, while I was at Northwestern, I really felt like self-discovery was a pretty big thing and working things on my own. Uh, it's still a struggle, you know, to kind of do that today. I mean, I think it is for everyone, like, kind of developing the independence to work and kind of figure things out, especially when you run into issues on your own. Mm. But... Uh, I, I think I took a lot away from that during my time there uh, of kind of how to work on my own and how to like identify what works and what doesn't. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think a lot of the concept of just like kind of hearing something in my head, the ideal sound, the ideal thought, translating that to a horn and using the sounds around me, whether it was coming from my teachers, whether it was coming from uh, going and listening to the Chicago Symphony recordings, uh, other people in my studio uh, to create that ideal sound. You know, I think that was the most important thing that I took away uh, from my time at Northwestern and making like really informed musical decisions uh, while sustaining just a beautiful sound. Mm. Um, and I, I think, you know, especially like I said, you know, it was different when I was going into school. Those were just things that weren't when I was a freshman, I didn't, I didn't think of any of that. I wasn't like, you know, I was just like, oh, I'm from Texas. I was in marching band. I like to play loud. Mm. I, I like to, you know. <laughs> Man, I, I relate I, to that. <laughs> I have free, <laughs> you know, like, it, I mean, in Texas, like, all I did for the first, like, you know, four four months of school is just marching band. And it's just mm-hmm. like, I loved, I just played loud. I didn't really, you know, care about a lot of things that, like, you know, you have to focus on to be not only tasteful, but just like a refined musician. So a lot of what I took away from my time at Northwestern was kind of how to do that and then slowly developing and building on that. Mm. But when I came to NEC and started studying with Toby Oft, uh, principal trombone of Boston, uh, he was what I wanted in the moment that I was going. I, you know, my, your master's degree, what does a master mean? Like, I, I, for me, I was I wanted to like develop my professional standing i wanted to make sure that where my playing was could help me get to the next uh you know i guess milestone in my career and a lot of that had to do with how i handled my anxiety how i handled perform like just performing anxiety how i handled going to auditions how i handled performing uh both concerts recitals things like that uh, while also taking certain habits that I might have developed over my time uh, in my undergrad and refining those things and really tweaking them to make them a complete whole product, you know, because mm. as much as it is like, you know, working on my instrument, there's this whole other mental side that I think a lot of people are easy to overlook. Um, and it, it really does become a huge part of who we are, you know, with this, these, uh, mental barriers that we kind of have to overcome in order to get to the next uh, milestone we want to get to. So a lot of my time at NEC was really focusing on auditions uh, and how to 
uh, prepare, how to practice, how to work on things in a way where I could see the progress uh, day by day, month by month, year by year. Um, and Toby really helped me honestly, like just help my mental psyche. Like he really helped me focus in on how I could control that and maybe use it more to my advantage rather than my disadvantage. Um, you know, everyone deals with performance anxiety in some manner. I, I, I some people are naturally better at it. And for me, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've had a lot of bad audition experiences where things just didn't go well, obviously. Uh, I think, again, everybody does, but um, I you certainly have to learn. do. Yeah, you, I'm, sure, I'm <laughs> sure both of you guys do, but you have to, you, you have no, to Brandon's, learn how to... Brandon's perfect. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. No, no, not at all. <laughs> nice to you, Brandon. You're perfect, man. <laughs> I mean, look at that face. Wow. <laughs> in, the cat, in, the, in the cat in the background. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, you, you really have to learn how to curb... Uh, uh, curb those uh, those feelings and emotions when you're in the heat of the moment. And I, I it's not to say that I'm the know all of everything. Like I I have a lot to work on. I, mm -hmm. I'm not that much older than, you know, I'm not older. I, I'm not older than I'm like maybe two years older than you, Sam. Right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, two well, years older than you? you. I'm 24. Okay, yeah, two years, 22. I don't know how you old, old you are, Brandon. But I'm 21. Okay, yeah. See, yeah. like, I, I'm not that much older. Brandon, than I thought you, you were 40, bro. No, no. <laughs> no. But um, I, I still have a lot to learn and a lot to, you know, take away what I've learned in school. And I, I think for my time at NEC, I really kind of learned how to become more refined as a performer. I would say, uh, become more refined as just a musician and. I continue to try to curb, uh, you know, my behavior and my my playing to reflect the teaching that I've learned from Toby. Uh, you know, especially there were just certain habits that I had ingrained in my playing uh, that I, I still continue to work on to make better. And, um, you know, I was pretty determined in terms of auditions when I came here. Uh, I had a lot of motivation towards those things, but not only just professional auditions like competitions, festivals, et cetera. Like, I really wanted to broaden my reach and try to accomplish more uh, than I had uh, the previous four years. So um, that was a lot of my focus with Toby. Mm. That's great. But, so, I mean... What that breaking through point, man, I think I think you're getting there or you're there, you know, you're starting to break through into things. And I, you you went to PMF and Verbier and all of these festivals and you're starting to get these gigs and things like that. I mean, it's such an exciting time. How, how are you dealing with that? Like uh, in your practice? I mean, are you finding things more fun or less fun or I don't know? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it's it's hard to say with this, especially with like all this coronavirus stuff. Like, right. you know, personally, I can tell you, you know, over the past, it's already June now, man. Shit, um, mm -hmm. it's been three months, like since school kind of went to this online format. But I mean, personally, for me, uh, I've really, I've personally really struggled, you know, over these three months to kind of make sense of what I'm doing and also just my just practicing on your own is like a your own thing. Like, you know, we're always surrounded at school. We have the luxury of being around other musicians and constantly playing and collaborating with people. And then it, now it just kind of like in a snap, it just all went away. We're just yeah. having to work kind of on our own. Obviously like, you know, there's virtual um, collaborating and things like that, but it's still, you know, it's not the same experience that you would get at school. And especially with me like graduating now where I'm, I'm going to have to, regardless, like work on my own. Um, it's been difficult to, uh, personally, like these past three months, but you know, with like, in terms of like success, um, you know, like festivals and things like that, they, while they are great, you know, they're great experiences. I, I, they're some of the most memorable experiences I think I'll have, uh, you know, in my life, some of them. And, um, they're all just building experiences to me. You know, I don't, I don't view it as I, I did this thing, you know, it was, it's prestigious or whatever. Like I, I, I just, regardless of what I'm doing, it's all just trying to help me get to the bigger picture goal for me. Uh, it's trying to get me to where I want to be as a musician, where I want to be as a human trombonist. Um, and while they are like, I guess, good confirmation that I'm going in the right direction. 
they're not the defining moment that makes it like you know you've made it because i haven't made it you know i'm still i'm still working i'm still trying to grind i'm still trying to figure out a lot of issues that i want to figure out and break through to the next part you know there's always there's another barrier that you're trying to you're trying to hit down and that's what i honestly like you know a lot of um again like going back to my studying with toby like he really really like made that a point to me is like regardless of your success you're you're always looking forward to the next thing you're always trying to find what is motivating you to get to the next spot and how you're going to get there how are you going to work on it and yeah i mean i just take it like that i the success i guess the success you know it's been really nice and i some of it has been really like exciting for me uh, i'm really excited to you know uh hopefully you know once things get back to some resemblance of normal uh, mm-hmm. i'm really excited to see where i can take things and where it will lead me um but i'm just going to keep working you know i'm going to keep going for strive for excellence and trying to figure out what I can do next to just make the next move and, uh, be happy in my career, you know? Mm. Uh, I, <laughs> hopefully I, I, I word this question well, but, uh, so you're at that moment now where, uh, uh, you're your own teacher, I guess. Uh, Sam and I, uh, we, we have another two years until that happens, but, uh, I guess, uh, what I'm trying to ask is, uh, it, it can, it can be difficult not having someone, uh, with you once, once a week telling you, Hey, uh, I would do this, do that. Uh, but yeah. what tools are you using in order to, I guess, progress higher up that ladder? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, it's really difficult, you know, practicing on your own, no teacher. And it's only been for me now, maybe a month and a half, two months, and it's going to keep going. I mean, maybe an occasional lesson or something like that. But um, figuring out practicing has always been something that I have I still need to work on. Um, it's hard, man, like figuring out how to effectively make use of your time, especially when you have a lot of it. Uh, you know, it's kind of like the opposite of what we talk about when we're in school. Like we don't have a lot of time. How do we maximize the most out of it? It's the same thing, like – when we have all this time in the world, how are we going to maximize our practice? And I mean, at least for me, the most, I, I like to stay organized. I like to make sure that I have an idea of what I want to do. So writing things down is always the best way for me to at least keep a clear conscious and a clear uh, direction of where I want to go. Uh, you know, even getting as specific as like writing out exactly what I want to work on, how long I want to work on it for, and what I want to accomplish in that session, what I want to accomplish uh, within the week, having like these specific, uh, driven goals that you can then kind of like latch onto in some way. Uh, it, it helps me a lot personally in my practice. Uh, and then on top of that, like, you know, after you do set those goals and seeing how you progress, looking back and observing what you did, like observing the process in the same way that I observe like auditions and things like that, looking back onto it, listening to recordings of myself, listening to recordings of others, um, like taking away, uh, what did I do? How did I do it? What did I, what can I do better? Um, what did I do good? Like acknowledging the good, acknowledging the bad, but really you got to make sure you acknowledge the good because like, I feel like that's really easy to overlook. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really easy to get into the bad, bad, bad. But, um, you know, I think organization specifically for me, it really helps, especially now that I'm out of school and I'm not going to be having teachers, like having this clear idea of, uh, what I need to work on. And it constantly changes, you know, uh, everyone relates to this, but having week by week, seeing what needs to be tuned into, checked in, learning new things just for the fun of it, kind of going back into like having fun practicing, like, you know. Just like learning music, I really enjoy to play and love, love listening to. Um, and also just trying to make more of a habit of collaborating with people, whether it's virtual or in person. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, a lot of it is just becoming a creature of habit. Uh, mm. I got told that over the summer by Denson Paul Pollard. He was like, you know, when I was growing up in the, your position, I was just a creature of habit. Like I, I had a routine. I did it every day. I had to make sure that I was doing stuff uh, routinely to make sure that I was in my peak performance. 
And I, I, I just made that a part of my daily routine in life. Uh, and I think, you know, for me, that's what uh, I think really helps me bring results uh, when I do that. Um, so practicing, still figuring it out, but I think really becoming organized and becoming that creature of habit uh, now that I'm out of school and for those who are, aren't in school, like aren't studying with people, you know, it really does go a long way um, to do that. Well, Brandon, I, I'm curious about your uh, like Corona experience because you seem to have a lot of lessons with people. And I think this might this experience kind of makes it a little easier to do that. I mean, what what's your philosophy with that? I'm curious. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's it I, I it keeps me in check, I guess. Uh, you know, the first the first couple of weeks for me personally, uh, I. I, I had the occasional lesson with uh, my, my teacher at school. Uh, I would send them tapes. And after I recorded those tapes, I w- <laughs> admittingly, I would, uh, uh, so, some might say, slack off for the week. Uh, I would just sit down, you know, watch TV, practice for like half an hour, watch more TV, then maybe another half an hour, and that would be it for the day. Uh, but scheduling these lessons with people, you know, it makes me tell myself, I, you know, I, I have to sound good for this person, mm-hmm. uh, which can be dangerous at times. Sure. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it keeps me in shape for, for sure. Yeah. I, I don't know if either of you guys felt that way as well during the. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I haven't been taking so many lessons, but sorry, Anish, go ahead. I... No, 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 go for it. No, I, I, I haven't taken a single lesson since school start, stopped. I just, I, I picked things like uh, there was an online trombone competition and I had no intention on entering it, uh, like a solo competition, but I just prepared for it like I was going to do it. And I, I'm doing that now with uh, Baltimore Symphony pre-screening tape. I have to send in a, like a tape, uh, an appeal tape or something like that. So I'm ju- I'm just working on that kind of thing. Uh, I'm constantly having to schedule something. So I think it's the same kind of concept. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. I keep it's holding hard. myself accountable for it, you know? It's hard. I mean, you know, during this time, <laughs> man, like, at least for me, I was I was super burnt out at the end of the school. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I, I think especially this semester for me, I, I was doing a lot. I was taking a lot of auditions. I was traveling a lot. Uh, and then on top of that, I had, I, I didn't get to do it, unfortunately, because of all this stuff, but, you know, I was preparing for my own solo recital and then I was doing a chamber recital with my brass quintet. You know, these things pile up, you know, it's really easy to get overwhelmed. Uh, and I, I was experiencing that a lot, you know, when I, when quarantine started, I, I, I took some time off the horn, you know, it was really good. Um, but it's hard, you know, to kind of get back into that routine especially when you like when you have all this time in the in the world you know you might think like you know you want to just practice all the time but you know sometimes Mm -hmm. i don't know especially with all this stuff going on yeah you know like (laughs) uh, man like you know for me it's hard sometimes especially with like just like paying attention to what's going on in the world paying attention to like what's going on just in the city around you like sometimes it's just hard to have that uh my motivation like after a while but you know again you have to like figure out how to kind of break through that and work around it and i haven't taken any lessons either you know i've just been i've been just kind of enjoying my alone time and honestly just because it is like like brandon asked me you know how do you approach practicing like i it's it's something that i just want to kind of try to figure out yeah and work through the issues and i've been having some issues but you know um got to work through it and figure it out on your own. And then also, I mean, it's not bad to seek guidance for sure. Like I, I will seek guidance. I have seeked guidance, uh, but it's important to kind of figure out how to work as an individual. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's different for everybody. I think totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, going back to the, uh, to your uh, answer about uh, practicing, have, have you gone through, uh, just out of uh, curiosity, have you have you gone through different phases of of practicing, or has this been your uh, 
I, I guess, my, yeah, mind, mindset, I guess. Has, has this been mm-hmm. your mindset since day one, so to speak? No, well, I mean, definitely not. I've, it's definitely changed over time, for sure. I mean, when I was younger, I didn't really have a plan. I didn't really have a concrete idea of what I wanted to do. I mean, I was, I was young, you know, immature, kind of dumb. <laughs> I mean, you know, I was just, I was just kind of doing things, kind of just making it by, I mean, really. Um, but you know, when you get older and you like start to realize and you start to really see the people around you and like the types of, I mean, I was, I'm really fortunate and lucky to have been around really great colleagues really great trombone players, really great musicians all around, not even just trombone, who, and I'm sure the same applies to you guys too. Like, you know, sometimes I'll hear my colleagues play and you're just like, you're just like, wow, you know. I felt that about you, man. (laughs) Thank you. To be honest. (laughs) Yeah, like you, you, and it's, you know, those, you take away so much from what they are doing in the moment and how they're how they're approaching the instrument and how they're approaching their lifestyle and you know i think i really learned that i i needed to hunker down and figure out what is going to get me the results and like, like i said how is it going to get me to the next place i want to be so you know especially for me i think my turning point was in my my junior year in my like the end of my junior year beginning of my senior year you know I, it was just something as simple as like going into a lesson and, you know, I, I struggled in a lesson one time my junior year and it was just like, you know, I, I'm at this point in my, in my undergrad, like I, I can't accept these types of things, you know, there's like a certain level that you have to learn that you just can't tolerate, you know, Mm. you have to demand something from yourself, like the certain amount of excellence, the certain amount of priority to, just striving for greatness, um, as corny as that sounds, but no, it's really like, it's true. Like you, you have to demand a lot out of yourself, uh, to get remotely where you are. Cause like, I'm not, I, you know, for me, I, I feel like I had to work a lot of things out. I don't feel like I'm the most naturally talented person. I wasn't like born with just playing the trombone great when I was young. Uh, I had a lot, I still do have a lot of issues and I had a lot of issues that I've worked out over time and I continue to work out over time. But, you know, I think there was something in my junior year where it just kind of clicked. And, um, you know, I didn't, when I was younger, again, Northwestern had a different bit, a bit of a different environment. Like there were a lot of older students. So I didn't get to play an orchestra much, but I had a summer uh, when I went to Brevard Music Festival and I got to play a lot and I was just like, wow, like this is, this is incredible. Like I, this is awesome. Like playing in this orchestra, playing these like pieces, playing, playing these symphonies, like, you know, it, it shakes you. Like it really shakes you to your core. And for me, that was a moment where I was like, man, like I need to just, I need to just hunker down and just go hard. Just really, really execute, figure out what it is. And especially in my senior year at Northwestern, I just, I really, I really was just practicing a lot. I was trying to practice smarter, trying not to practice you know obviously practice smarter not harder and then you know i think once i got to nec that changed even more just kind of along those same lines toby really helped me kind of like assess what i was doing on my practice that maybe was taking away rather than uh, you know benefiting it so i learned more on like the things that i could do to prolong my practice the things i could do to make each practice session more efficient and feel more secure in my playing um yeah and i i think most of it just comes from like demanding the certain sense of uh, you know again excellence uh and striving for that high level of playing that you know you like you know you can achieve it if you just focus and put your mind to it yeah. um really going for that the highest level you can and maybe you miss maybe you really miss one day maybe you're like right under it but the average mean eventually comes out to where it's slowly getting higher and higher each week by week day by day year by year whatever it is um making that average go up so uh i mean practicing it, it's still going to change for me in the next couple of years. I'm, I'm, I'm positive. Cause you know, as we get older, we're probably going to deal with different things in our life, uh, different struggles, different, um, things that might affect our playing. 
Um, so, but it's really just a matter of finding that motivation and demanding that excellence. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I had an interesting, interesting connection with your story. Like, I feel like junior year was a, a turning point for me too. Like, I don't know. I, I just, I would look around the school and these, like the violinist and the cellist were just, you would walk past the practice room at like eight in the morning or something. And then, you know, at night at 8 PM, they'd be in the same room and you were like, wait a minute. Like I'm doing something wrong here. Like, yeah. <laughs> and so I, I had like these eye opening moments and right around junior year was like, I thought I was taking it seriously, but then I'm like, okay, I need to turn it on. Like take it, take it like mm -hmm. this is our this is what we do you know mm -hmm. like music is is like it's a fun thing and when you're young it's like oh that's so cool i get to meet all these people i get to travel all these places but it kind of ends up you're like oh man oh shit like what's going what's gonna <laughs> yeah. happen and, and, and it's yeah. crazy you know like junior year i guess like in terms of just like thinking about logistically you're like you know junior year you're like i got two more years of school and at least mm -hmm. for me i got to the end of it i'm like man i have one more year uh, and then maybe hopefully I'll do a master's degree, uh, if I get into a program and then from there you're on your own. And like, you know, uh, that one year went by and now these two years went by fast. So, you know, like y you got to make sure that you're, you're on your, you're on your toes. Like, you know, you got to Cause there, everyone else is also practicing alongside you. You know, this is yeah. not an easy business. We're surrounded by great players all around and, um, at least audition wise and like orchestra wise and things like that, you know, you got to really be on top of your game to find that success. So, uh, you know, junior year, man, you know, yeah, it did Tribute be it did something. <laughs> <laughs> something happens in you, man. I think it might be a maturity thing. I'm not, I'm curious yeah. about it, but I mean, and like I said, for me, it was just like a moment in a, in a lesson where I, mm. I just wasn't going well. And, talked to the teacher and was like, you know, you got to expect more out of yourself. You got to like, you, you have, you're, you're entering your, almost your last year of college. Like this can't be something that you tolerate. And, you know, from that moment for me, it was just, it was trying to find a more clear, organized way of approaching uh, my practice. Kicked you in the butt, dude. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's if valuable. it's not kicking, if it's not kicking your butt, man, you got to find a way to make For it sure. kick your butt. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, talk talk a bit about the uh, audition process with the uh, ballet, if you don't mind. Uh, it's do you? I, I guess if I'm wording, if I'm attempting to word this question well, uh, obviously there's there's a big sigh of relief when someone officially wins wins a uh, a uh, position within an orchestra but do you see uh the stress still the metaphorical stress still visible with having uh, won a trial yeah it's a great question um i mean obviously there's stress um you know and i i can definitely i i can tell you you know i am nervous about how it's going to go what's going to play out but I, I take, I guess, solace in the fact that I have made progress in the first part, the hardest part, which is just the audition itself, you know. Uh, and that makes me feel a little bit more comfortable, definitely a lot more comfortable about how I'm going to go when I go to this trial. Because at the end of the day, uh, I, I can't really control anything except how I, how I play, you know, how things go the things that I can kind of make sure that I can do my best once I'm there. Um, and then, you know, they decide whoever wants to decide. And I think this can apply to anything like, yeah, it, you know, it's, it's one person, a couple people's decision and uh, you live with it either way it goes. So obviously I'll be really happy if it goes well, if it doesn't, then I, I just have to continue to move on to the next thing. But the audition process, you know, like, any audition you know for me i i was pleasantly surprised <laughs> by how it went i you know i wasn't expecting anything f like i wasn't expecting it i wanted i went into the audition like i wanted to win um like i was going to give it my my best effort which i you know i really did i felt i felt strong about it 
and I kind of went with the same the same idea. Like you know, the results will fall where they fall. You know, you're playing, you advance, um, and then you're like, man, now I'm in the heat of the moment. You keep going, and then you know, keep things keep going well, and then eventually, you know, you're just you're just sitting in the room and they just tell you something, you know, and you're like, wow, like this is happening. Um, so it's a pretty surreal experience, you know, uh, having that, that type of experience. And, you know, I've, I've taken a lot of auditions, uh, especially these past two years where, you know, things just did not go well. Uh, I went in there, I may have had a bad chop day, something, uh, didn't go like I (laughs) chopped out in the middle of a, in the middle of an excerpt or I got cut off before I finished the list. Uh, you know, things just didn't go well. And, you know, you hear the no and you get discouraged, but then you keep moving on and on and you just keep trying and trying and trying. Hopefully you see some success. You know, I, I advanced in some and it didn't advance in a lot, but then, you know, you hopefully find one where you can continue to go on that process. You take trust in what is working. Uh, you try to see the growth that you're making Um, and I just think that, you know, at least for me, something that I took away also from Toby is like, you know, he always would tell me that you're never going to feel your best at the audition. You know, there's, there's so many things going on in your mind, in your body, your thought process, psyche, like there's, there's so much crap just going on in your brain that can just get in the way of what you want to do. And, you know, you really, it's just a matter of like controlling that really suppressing and like trying to, trying to figure out the right balance of what you want to let in versus what you want to push out. Mm. And, um, you know, I didn't feel my best at this audition. Like I, I wasn't feeling like my best chop wise. Like I, I made, I had to make, but the thing is like, I had ingrained so much over this past year, especially like doing things like mock auditions playing for as many people as possible, annoying the crap out of my friends and being like, hey, will you just listen to me do this mock round for you? You want to listen to me play Tuba Miram one more time? I, I and really like just honestly, sometimes I was extra man. I would I would I would go to a practice room at NEC, I would set it up like it's an audition, put stands up, put coats up, block it out, have a table, play for people, ask them to write me comments, uh run up and downstairs, do that, like put myself in these positions to where even where I wasn't going to feel my best, um, I could take, I, I could know that where I was performing was still at a high level, you know, regardless of all these deterrents and distractions that I could still perform at a high level. So, you know, um, that audition process was really, you know, surprising for me. It was really, I, I was very happy. I'm still happy, you know, and I'm I'm hoping that uh, with all this COVID stuff that, you know, <clears throat> things can resume sooner than later. But obviously, you know, you never know. And the public health is obviously more important. Um, but, you know, it's the audition experience is brutal, man. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm sure regardless of how it goes that at some point in my life, I'll I'll continue to take auditions and, um, even though this one was a success, uh, the next one won't be guaranteed. So I have to continue to work to figure out the audition process and, um, win over the majority, you know, in a panel, you gotta, you gotta impress enough people to make them convinced of your playing. And I want to convince them that my style of playing is what is best, you know, mm. um, and go from there, you know, but yeah audition process yeah you know it's tough (laughs) but it must like the sigh of relief from you know now you have proof that you're doing something right you know yeah i I guess you're getting those all all along the way and mm -hmm. it's it's like a a weight off the shoulders a little bit yeah no for sure uh it's 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 a good indicator that i'm going in the right direction um and i want to keep on that keep on that track you know Right. Whatever the next thing might be, I just want to keep on that track of, of, of success and always mm. trying to go for more. Mm. I like that. Dangerous living a life on the edge, right there. <laughs> <laughs> the edge of the unknown. Push yourself, you know. That's good. It's, it's hard. hard though, man. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, because, you know, again, like, uh, you know, I just speaking of just burning out and kind of going back to that, it's, it's difficult, man. Like I've, I've personally had a lot of stuff in my life over the past year that has been pretty difficult, uh, you know, just to kind of manage alongside practicing and working on trombone and working on myself as a musician. And it's, um, it's difficult to like kind of balance the two and kind of just feel confident in, in seeing what you're doing is right, you know? Um, but you know, I, I, it's a challenge. You continue to work on it every day. Yeah. Make progress every day. Right. That's good. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Sam tells me that you're big into, or at least interested in, uh, meditation. I've, uh, I've, I've tried to meditate quite, quite a few times, uh, before I start in the morning, but I always find myself, you know, I'll, I'll put my headphones on, I'll find some guided meditation album on, uh, Apple music. And after 10 or 15 minutes, I'll take my headphones off and feel absolutely the same. So I, <laughs> I just thought I'd, you know, just ask you about it. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to tell you the first recommendation. Switch from Apple Music, man. Go to Spotify. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I'm not sponsored. Uh, but, um, I, you know, meditation, I've I've worked on it, and I've I've tried to make it a thing. And uh, I guess for me personally, I ha- there's an app that I specifically use. It's called Headspace. Uh, it's a really great app, I think, just to ki- the guy who does the guided meditation. I don't know. For me, just personally, it works. Is that the app with Sam Harris narrating it? I think it is. is let, me ch- let me check. His name. But regardless, it's it's a great app, and they've really expanded over uh, the past couple years. I, I first started like messing with meditation uh, while I was in my undergrad, like my third, third fourth year. And it, like kind of going back, like, you know, life brings a lot to us. Like it's, it's not even just for music's sake, like, you know, for just your own mental health and life, you know, meditation can bring a lot of, uh, relaxation and calmness to just your everyday life. Um, you know, I actually am hoping to restart doing it again. Cause it's, e- it's easy to kind of go in and out of, you know, of doing it. And I, I need, it's something I definitely want to, in combination with things kind of like yoga, uh, it really does help you. I think benefits. Like I used to do when I was a, when I was a senior in college, I would do yoga seven a.m. I think six a.m. seven a.m. two times a week, and it was nice. great. And you know, I would do meditation with it. And there's something about just kind of, you know, to to your to your you know, you say you don't feel anything, but I guess like it it's it's a matter of kind of assessing what you're feeling in that moment. Um kind of picking out the negatives and positives in your thoughts and kind of just not even just like getting rid of them, but just like letting them be, letting them be there, accepting, acknowledging it, and then going on and, and kind of day by day assessing that, you know, whether you do one meditation session a day two, it doesn't matter, but it's really helped it helps you keep a clear state of mind. And I think in times of stress and in times of, um, you know, especially like periods like this where there's a lot in the world going on right now and it's not easy for everybody. Like everybody's having to deal with uh, different struggles and some more than other, like some more than others by like a large margin. Um, So, you know, using this tool uh, it, it really does help you, I think, create like kind of a a, a more I don't even want to say positive, but just clear, clear headspace to kind of focus in on you know your day and focus in on uh, what you can do um, uh, moving forward. But I would I would really recommend Headspace. I really like it. It also has some great ones for different topics, like uh, things like sleeping. Uh, shorter ones for when you don't have as much time. Uh, but yeah, I, I really recommend it. 
Yeah, I, I don't have, know if you guys have yeah. much experience doing meditation. I, I have like, I don't want to say I'm like super experienced, but I do think it's like a great tool. Yeah. I, I, I would like to say <laughs> that I, every day I, I do a type of meditation, um, at least once a day. And I, I would like to talk about like how I think it relates to music and trombone and stuff like that. And auditions, especially since we've been talking about it, um, there's science, like actual science behind um, when, when you're in the process of meditating and in the app, they probably explain this. There will be things that like thoughts that come into your head. And the goal is to kind of bring your consciousness to the front. And you're, you know, you're kind of always floating up here. There's a lot of worries and uh, anxiety and things that are coming up and you're thinking about the past and you know, that, that just clouds your head. And in an audition, it kind of amplifies that, right? Like I, I, you can experience, I'm sure you've all experienced that. It's like, it's like, Oh my God, what's going to happen? Oh, I, I messed this up when I was practicing like a week ago. I hope it doesn't happen now. Something like that. So I, I think that it, um, trying to get to the, almost like you're, you're just seeing out of your eyes, you know, like we're, we're human beings. Uh, we, we're walking around, we're trying to, trying to be successful in the society that we're probably not even accustomed to be successful in, you know, like I, I feel it's hard to motivate myself and things like that to just keep going. Cause I feel like it's unnatural, you know? So I think meditating is, is kind of, a, it's a way to quiet those, those noises and almost have like a third person perspective, but, but you're seeing clearly, you know, like what, what the situation actually is, and uh yeah i i would recommend i mean the apps are so great and uh it's just great to know that you're doing it right because a lot of people you know they go into it and you're kind of wondering the whole time am i doing this right but mm -hmm. but it, each yeah i mean <laughs> but, but it's hard it's hard man but every every time that you or you're you're in like a situation where you're meditating every time that you focus back on your breath you know, and that, that's part of it. It's like, well, that that's what you can start with. You can focus on other things too. But when you go back to focusing on your breath, you're literally doing a bicep curl with your brain, you know, and it's been proven to, to work like that. So they, they see it in the brain scans and all that stuff. So each time you do it, you're improving your level of focus and being in the moment. And that's gonna, I mean, it, you said it feels like you don't do anything and you're probably, I mean, in reality, you're really not doing anything. I mean, it, it's all up here, but, but, mm -hmm. but in a pressure situation that will pay off for you, or at least for me, it has. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I had that, I have that problem a lot, man. Like mm -hmm. I get the sweaty palms and like, I start thinking about all this, the bad times that I have with this excerpt or this solo or something. So, it changed changed things for me and i'm still still in the middle of it and i'm st still start i'm tr starting to get into the spiritual aspect of it too which is another thing and i don't know there's different types of meditation and people do crazy stuff with it like like hold your breath for 10 minutes or something like that it's yeah there's a know. guy uh I, I try to remember what his name is i think it's Wim Hof, Wim Hof, uh, dude. the Ice Man, the Ice Man. He's my Honestly, inspiration. <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, whenever, whenever I haven't tried, I think I might have tried his guy at meditation one time, but he has that ice sh ice shower thing. Yeah, and I tried that, man. It's hard. It takes a takes a lot of like brain power here to just to just do that for thirty days. Oh man, yeah, seriously. But yeah, I mean. It, you know, meditation is a difficult thing for, I think, just to grasp your head around the, the idea and concept of what you're trying to accomplish. But I mean, I don't know, maybe it's easier to look at it like you're not really trying to accomplish anything and just trying yeah. to explore uh, what's going on in here and trying to assess and evaluate what's going on in here and what you can do with that information. Um, yeah, absolutely. Brandon, yeah. you need to just get on it, man. Headspace. Dude, yeah, Headspace. Man. Yeah, I, I, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got. Oh, you know what? Speak. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make sure that 
I'm going to try to start doing this more often too, for sure. Cause it, I haven't, I haven't been doing it as much. And honestly, that's probably why my mind right now is pretty muddled and, mm. and like, you know, j- you know, just like filled with a lot of worry and anxiety, definitely with just like kind of how the world is right now. It's, yeah. it's been a bit depressing for me to kind of absorb day to day. So right. yeah, we, this we ain- musicians are pretty empathetic people, right? Like we experience like the, I mean, the Black Lives Matter protests going on and um, I I watch videos of like police brutality and it really hurts me and like things like that. I really have to step away and I know it's like a privilege to do that. And, you know, I I'm sure I'll get in trouble for it. Trigger warning. Right, Brandon. But <laughs> but it it I I need that. I need that, uh, a certain mental escape, you know, from from these things going on so i mm-hmm. you've been in boston i mean how's that going with uh yeah all the i mean protests and things going on there ha- it hasn't been as i think as um uh, crazy as other cities uh in ter- well in, just in terms of at least the the beginning um uh, the, the whole looting thing uh, I mean, I, I've I've gone to two protests, and you know, I hope to do more because uh, you know the cause is obviously it's a very serious issue, uh, and it has a lot of momentum right now, uh, and I want to do my part, you know, to make that change, uh, to make some change in the community, and obviously with the movement as strong it is as it is, I think it it provides people who have been really you know facing. Uh, some serious issues like you know a voice and it gives them the platform to have a voice and to really um bring so it's kind of like observing the issues bringing light to those issues and accepting that they are reality and then giving the people the platform and demanding that change and uh, i i think it's really important we demand that change uh and especially you know with people who are privileged you know and people who do have the opportunity to like things like vote and, uh, you know, are lucky enough to, like, live in these nice houses and, like, you know, play instruments like us and do these things. Like, we we, we are really privileged people. We have a lot of um, things in our life that we should be grateful for. And, you know, obviously, I think, you know, this is a very serious issue. And like, like you said, you know, you watch these things and it's it's hard to watch, you know. it's It's really hard to digest and just internalize the type of shit that people have to just deal with on a daily basis. Like this is, it's sad that, you know, it's, it's the reality of what life is. Uh, Yeah. And, you know, for me, I think personally, like I just have to take advantage of my, of what I can do, uh, to help, whether that's donating, whether that's being a voice, whether that's going to a protest and helping those who need to, who need to voice their, their opinion right now and Mm -hmm. who need to like have something to stand on, uh, being there to be that person that they can stand on and, um, demanding change. So, you know, go vote, (laughs) pay attention to what's going on around in your local communities, uh, for me, like, even though I live in Boston, I'm registered to vote in Texas because that's my permanent address. So paying attention to what's going on in your, in your cities, your towns, your states, and then obviously, you know, what's going on in the country. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a difficult time. Uh, yeah. but you know, Boston, I obviously, I think I, I was really happy with the protests that I've been to. It's It's been really inspiring to see people have that voice and express their opinions. And it's powerful stuff, man. Like, you know, I, I don't know if you guys have done anything where you guys have been. I don't know what it's like in Canada. I've heard some stuff about I know I know a lot of countries are also protesting and in, in support and solidarity of the movement. Right. Yeah. Um, and this is not like a movement that's been just happened like it's been going on for years you know and right um yeah you know i i just want to do my part absolutely yeah Yeah, what is it like in canada brandon i'm curious uh yeah i i I would sum it up to what anish just said uh it's it's not as it's not as uh 
it was weird. It's not as violent as uh, some other cities, uh, but there have been uh, protests here to show uh, solidarity with uh, the states, with what's going on in the states as well. Yeah, man. I mean, in in Florida, there's been a lot of craziness going on, man. I, mm-hmm. The police are very militant here, so unfortunately, yeah, I've been I've been kind of afraid. But um, I, and, I, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Well, it's it's hard, man. I mean, like, there's so many things going on. There's like this happening in the middle of like a public health crisis. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but you know if you don't feel like you want to go to a protest there, there's still like other ways to help and be involved and make sure that you're a part of the cause and trying to be on the right side of uh, what's going on right now. You know, I, one thing I have been doing um, is just having a lot of conversations about it, like with people around me and people, my friends from everywhere. I think, Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's not on their radar, it should be. And, uh, yeah, that's the only way we're going to make progress. You know, some people just, you know, I don't really care about the polit- politics. You know, I live my life and like there are, there are certain things that you just need to care about, you know, for mm-hmm. other people. So I think mm-hmm. a, a, Amer- a very American attitude is to be very individual and um, self-sustaining just, and things like that. So it's hard. Yeah, just, it's sometimes hard to break out of that. Mm-hmm. And yeah. just, uh, I think, I think it's easy for a lot of people just to also stay silent and just kind of go about what they're doing in their daily lives. But again, a, a large part of it is like observing and accepting that they are the reality of what we're living in right now. Um, and if you don't accept that, then you're blind to really what's happening. And that's kind of an issue. So we need to like, a you know, just whether it's going to protest, donating, bringing more awareness to what's going on, uh, especially like as musicians, you know, there's a lot of schools that have been uh, putting these initiatives to make minority composers, predominantly African-American uh, composers, right. like featured in their programs, which is great. And, and it con- needs to continue to happen. And like, you know, as like for both of you who are still in school, like, you know, putting, um, letting those people in within your school management know that, it's something you want just the same way you would vote, you know, letting right. those people know. Sure. Yeah. You have a voice everywhere. I mean, yeah. everywhere that people will listen, I guess. <laughs> so, and, well, but I, there's, there's also a difference too. Like, you know, you got to make sure there's, you got to know when it's, it's okay to talk. And then you got to also know when it's okay to just stop, you know? Yeah. Right. Because right. again, like my voice is not more important than some people out there right now. Um, uh, Sure. You know, and they need to be heard more than I, I do. And I want to be that person to just let them stand on. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, the, the mood is the mood has come down a bit. So I, I'm just <laughs> I want to I want to know about uh, your future goals, Anish. I mean, you the orchestra thing, you know, we all, all us trombonists, tubists, you know, we're orchestra orchestral musicians. We study classical music. Um, I've found that my goals have kind of evolved over time and evolved past the orchestra a little bit. So I'm, I'm curious what, uh, what you're thinking. I mean, with your career in general, do, do you have any, um, I mean, may, yeah, just tell me, you know what? <laughs> I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> I don't no. need to bring out that question. any longer. <laughs> oh, good. Um, you know, it, I agree, you know, like a lot of people's goals when they're in school is like, I want to win a job, I want to win a job, I want to win a job. And I guess while I'm on the right direction, you know, I I think, especially now being done with school, I, I think that's something I'm searching for, like really what I want to do with my craft. And I think my large overall goal still remains just to find a role whether it's part of a big, small group or just as like an individual where I can directly influence and just influence people in an effective manner and inspire them to do whatever it is they want to do, whether that's being a musician, being a trombonist, human being, 
uh, you know, like I, I just want to try to be someone who can be like an effective uh, person in my community uh, in some manner, you know, I think that's just a large overall goal. And obviously like how I achieve that uh, is through these other smaller goals, like kind of talking about the whole thing with milestones. So obviously, you know, things like winning a job, you know, it gives you a platform. It gives you something where you can go, go out and maybe on a higher profile, you know, be able to interact with more people. And for where I am right now, it's, taking advantage of the resources that I currently have and trying to affect as many people as possible. Uh, Whether that's starting to get into teaching, uh, you know, taking on students and trying to go through that process and see how they develop. Uh, Whether that's doing community service, you know, like uh, playing in different venues for people who might not be necessarily uh, exposed to music, whether it's classical or just normal just normal music and it doesn't have to be classical. Um, and you know, also I, I think this just doesn't apply to music as well, but like, just like my hobbies, like, you know, I have, I just want to enjoy my life, enjoy what I'm doing, have fun doing it and try to make some positive change. Um, and it keeps changing, but I think that overall goal continues to stick. Um, but yeah, you know, I guess right now, man, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to search for, I'm, I honestly like, and personally, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find what I want to do next in terms of my goal. Um, with this whole coronavirus thing, you know, it's kind of just been at home, and in some ways, I've been putting it off, just kind of like, a, like a, this whole, it's, it's kind of hard to accept sometimes, like what's going on, and I'm trying to. I think recently I've really been trying to think about what I want to do as my next step and what I want to take out of that and what I want to make out of that as well. Hmm. Beautiful. That's great. You. Yeah. <laughs> Tasty. Where's the, where's the reaction button here? There we go. Nice. <laughs> there it is. I got the claps from Brandon. You know, it's real. <laughs> but yeah, oh, you man. know, yeah, you know, if there's anything that like, if someone listens to this podcast, like I'm not, I'm not like, you know, again, like some of the guys you've interviewed, like they're incredible musicians, pedagogues, and they know much more about the trombone than I do. But like, you know, I really do feel like I, I'm just a normal person who just has an attitude of trying to just improve and trying to make do with what I have and not not trying to be like other people just trying to be myself and trying to figure it out and demand that excellence out of myself and you know even just talking to you guys right now like it's it's getting me really motivated cuz <laughs> I, I i want now like you know I we just, here I, we here at the tone dome are a motivating source <laughs> all right <laughs> you know take I'm, note of that people yeah <laughs> So, you know, I just, I I think if there's any point that gets put across is just work really hard, have the attitude, have the mindset and just, just go for it. Yeah, man. Awesome. I think I, that's what, I mean, why we asked you on, I I really appreciate that about you, Anish. Like I, throughout my experience knowing you and I mean, it's been two years now or something like that, but I I met you when you were a a wee little freshman. Oh, that's true. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's a story was, for another time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you know, like two, yeah. two and a half, three ish years. Right, and I, I really appreciate that. Like you, you know, you you have the ability to put your head down and just work hard. And and you know, I I was a part of. You played for me one time for your or uh, audition preparation and everything. So that that does a lot for someone who's younger than you and wanting to do the same thing. So thank you. First of all, but thanks, man. I, I'm thanking you. <laughs> thanks for listening. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad that had that effect on you. And you know, it's weird, man. Being a master student, you're gonna experience it too. Like I, I didn't really know how to, you know, make my effect on people, hmm. and it's still hard, you know, figuring it out. Like I, I do. Like looking back on my time in school, I do wish I like had played with uh, people more. You know, certain people just like 
getting that experience one-on-one with people and trying to figure it out. And I did that with you. I did that with some other people, but not as many people as I could have, you know? Mm. And, but you know, you live and you learn and I, I'm still in Boston. So, yeah, you know, I, you know, I, there's still a lot of great players here and there's great players everywhere you go. So, you know, learn how to make the most of it. <laughs> Definitely. Awesome. Well, Brandon, you have any more questions or we, should we move on to our, uh, rapid fire oh god Please, I'll, <laughs> sam i'll let you do your thing man go, go ahead <laughs> oh buddy okay all right okay. We'll, we'll, can, can i ask uh, can i ask you guys a question yeah yeah what what, what if what have your quarantine hobbies been brandon go if if you've had any oh that... hobbies you know i oh yeah <laughs> I, uh, his O is so Canadian sounding, isn't it? I oh, I'm it. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've just been. You know, I I have a dog here, so I I play around with them from time to time. I have parakeets, so I play around with them from time to time. But other than that, yeah, I. <laughs> I don't have it. I'm, I'm sorry if, if it seems boring. I, don't, I, don't, I, I just practice. I'm, I'm in my like studio right now, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I just, yeah, I've just been practicing during this quarantine. And nothing wrong with that, dude. Nothing wrong with I'm, that. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. it's a you hobby. Got, also, you. I mean, to be fair, like having parakeets is a hobby. I mean, like, yeah. I, I, you're probably one of like two or three people I know that has pet birds. <laughs> Pet birds are cool, aren't they, Brandon? Aren't they like really smart? Oh, they're awesome. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, they don't talk. I've I've been teaching them to to speak, to talk, but yeah, they're great. Well, we'll have to have them as a guest on the podcast oh, at some point <laughs> when when they start being conversational. Two know, hour absolutely. podcast with parakeets. <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> but anyway, my uh, if you're curious about my hobbies, yeah. Um, I I am Sam. Tell me. Good. All right. Well, I mean, like we we talked about meditation. I'm trying to learn more about that. I just finished um, a book called Siddhartha. It's about Buddhism. Um, But Herman Hess wrote that the the author. I really recommend that to you guys. But I'm trying to read more. And um, I listen to a lot of podcasts. So I don't know if that's a hobby or what. But um, yeah, I'm just trying to I'm trying to learn. I'm I'm inspired by astrophysics a lot. Like I really enjoy listening to people talk about that and I'm currently reading it's sitting right here so I can put it up but currently reading this book uh Astrophysics for People in a Hurry by Neil deGrasse Tyson. That it's just a lot of mind-bending things. I'm just trying to throw myself for a loop every day. Mm-hmm. Uh so I don't know. That's about it. I mean, I ride a, I ride my bike around. Nice. Trying to stay, keep my mind doing something at mm-hmm. all, at all times. So, yeah. Nice. <laughs> it's been kind of nice, actually. I mean, as much as, you know, as much as everybody's, you know, going stir crazy and stuff like that. I think, I think I'm, tr- I'm really trying to make the most out of it. So that's good. You know, yeah. yeah. You know, I, we won't have this much time often oh, no no you know so it's gonna be a real culture shock whenever like just work and school and things go back to any resemblance of normal like just that that type of schedule mm. it's gonna be hard for people to grasp around i mean it's gonna be hard for me too for sure yeah yeah i'm scared man i'm i'm shaking shaking in my skin right now <laughs> i mean i have to move to new york city man i don't know what the heck's gonna happen with that so you just gotta do it yeah dude yeah. just do it just yeah. do it i like the nike nike's got it right just do just, it just do it that's how you approach life for sure <laughs> all right let's do these rapid fire questions anish you're not gonna avoid it any longer <laughs> <laughs> i had to do my my ask you guys one question for the podcast yeah, no worries. I like it. I like all right it. are you ready i'll try okay what is the last thing you've listened to? Ooh, uh, dude, I think it was. I'm, I'm gonna pull it up. This is not rapid fire shit. No, um, dude, it's fine. It's fine. If it's good, it's worth the wait, man. 
The questions will I, oh, be read oh, quickly. Oh, oh, it was it was Sunflower by Vampire Weekend. That's been stuck in my head. Oh, nice. Okay. Just Interesting. Listen, listen to it. It'll get stuck in your head. Okay. All right. Good one. All right. What's the first thing you think of when you wake up in the morning? <laughs> Man, I well, I've been with my girlfriend and she has this cat, so it, this cat's just been wanting me to feed her food. So it's do I gotta feed this cat? <laughs> <laughs> and great. now and now she's gone so now i'm like looking over her cat um so yeah it's like is she gonna be meowing for food that that's my first honestly <laughs> it's my first thought well that's cute man i like that all right uh what if you could play a duet with one musician any genre any period of time who would it be any instrument any or instrument anything Any dude open your mind man oh uh you know astrid goberto no no oh, dude beautiful voice she has a beautiful voice go listen to it it's like that'd be an interesting comp it's kind of like you know i don't even know how to describe it just like she just has a gorgeous voice it's like mm. bossa nova style music Ooh. uh maybe her or no, this is Man. rapid fire. Only one. Only one. Okay. All right. Only one. <laughs> <laughs> this is not sit and ponder questions, dude. All yeah. right. All right. Ready? Next one. Yeah. Favorite slide position. Oh. Fourth. Why? I don't know. It's just. It's not first. Okay. It's not seventh. Yeah. It's kind of like right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and. I don't know, man. Like G natural. Yeah. That's a, it's good, a good note. note. It's a good oh, note. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. All right. Uh, if let's see, what's your biggest performance fail that you would like to relive and correct? Do you know, do you have one off the top oh, of your head? Shit, man. Dude, there's <laughs> a lot. Um, performance fail. Um, so over the summer at uh, last summer at PMF, I had like a little solo. We were playing. Marin Alsop was conducting, and we were doing this encore with her. And it was like a, it was like this Brazilian Spanish piece, and it had a solo in it. And it was the first time performing it. I had practiced it so much, and I was so nervous, man. I was so nervous, and I just. I just I just pooped all over it. <laughs> it was a, I, I got to perform it twice. Actually, like I guess like you know, in terms of like I got to make it up because I I, I played it again. Like I, I felt really good about. It. I killed it. But nice. I so you I did correct it. I did correct it. Nice. I guess you know uh, you know maybe something from my like senior recital, mm. chopping out or like a competition. There was a competition there. I just I played and I I just chopped out. So that nah, maybe I'll maybe I'd want to fix that. Dude, that's the worst feeling in the world, man. Yeah, chopping out is not fun. God, dang. You don't even know, Brandon. You play tuba, chopping out. <laughs> Dude, chopping he's like, out. He's is like, what does that mean? What, what is it's that? It's like my mouth is smaller <laughs> than the mouthpiece. I can fit my whole face into it. That's, he's got yeah, cho you got chopped so for funny. days, man. Thank you. <laughs> is it, am I totally wrong? I don't even know. Probably. I'm sure. You, I'm sure. I'm sure they, they get tired. I'm sure you get tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. Yeah. They don't okay. get tired. They don't get tired. Dude. <laughs> I don't believe it. That wasn't very believable the way you answered that. So, <laughs> all right. Pineapple on pizza. Do you like it? No. Hell no. Hell no. Oh, dude. Sorry. Yeah, Brandon and I, I gotta mean, go. Like, we gotta go. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I mean, I I love to just hate on it. My girlfriend loves Hawaiian pizza. I don't. I, I mean. I'll eat it, but like, there's just so many better things I'd rather have on a pizza. I understand. I I feel like you're hating though. I feel like you don't. No, understand. okay, okay, but there's no hate here. All right, <laughs> we just we just almost left there. You just right? have strong opinion on <laughs> a strong pineapple opinion. pizza. Yes, exactly. All right, next one. Uh, how much would you pay a hacker threatening to release your browser history to your friends and family? <laughs> <laughs> how much would i pay yeah oh dude I, 
I mean, honestly, <laughs> pro- probably not that much. <laughs> oh, he's a clean. You're you're a clean I mean, guy. You can, I mean, like you can expect what you can expect. You know, like yeah. I don't think you're gonna find anything surprising. Okay. But I, you know, I'd probably say like a hundred, five hundred bucks. I'm, dude. I'm not trying to pay money, man. Like, I'm a, <laughs> I'm broke. I'm not. <laughs> I don't have the money to be paying people to hide my browser history. So just take the hit, man. Take I'll the take hit. the L. I'll take the L. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. If you could choose any superpower, what superpower would you choose? Mm, probably, probably fly. Flying? Where would I don't you know. fly? <laughs> anywhere man <laughs> i don't know where i don't know where i would fly just let like the same way you walk and you don't know where you're walking bro i just fly you know or teleport or yeah, teleport or fly i mean teleport's a little bit better but it's kind of gotcha. all right well that's all the uh questions i have there um i do have a audience uh comment wait from who 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 asked this question i want to know so this is from a uh sophie sophie wong wang oh god <laughs> <laughs> who i think you know very well uh she wants to know how was your uh cinco de mayo <laughs> my cinco de mayo was very it was very good i had a fun time yeah i uh had a fun time it was rough, but I had a fun time. <laughs> you guys can take that however you want, all right? <laughs> Tone Dome listeners. <laughs> Tone, <laughs> Tone Dome listeners, I I hope you I hope you had a good Cinco de Mayo as well. You know. <laughs> all right, Brandon, you got anything? No. Thank you very much, Anish. For yeah, guys. Fun. It was great. No, thank, thank you guys. So thank you guys for having me. And I, I hope I hope you guys are able to make this, you know, a really big thing because I think what you guys are trying to do, it's it's great for the musician and brass community for sure, you know. And I think the more you try to expand and like I was talking to you guys earlier, like, you know, kind of pushing this idea forward, uh, I think you guys can really inform a lot of listeners and musicians who you know, don't have the access to these types of people, uh, you know, normally, you know, like not every, especially now during this time, it's, I think it's important that we have stuff like this. So thanks for having me. I really do appreciate it. Dude, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, we appreciate your unique perspective, man. Yes. Yeah, yes. man. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Anish, man. Thank really you. Say it. hi of course, to man. Uh, Otters for me. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Definitely for sure. You can say hi to him right now. Just yeah, give him, if you're watching. Give him a big give him a big shout out. I don't... <laughs> nice man. Keep it in the family. I yeah, like absolutely. it. <laughs> well anyway, let's let's finish this up. All right. All right. Anish, Bye, thank Anish. you very much. Take care. Take care. Thank you guys. Absolutely. Thanks, thank you. Bye-bye. Keep in touch, Anish. Of course, yes. we'll do, man.